Tantum Nagit Hariju Kijaya Jayam Vishnupada Paramahamsa Paribra Jagachar Javajasto Telasuta Shri Srima Jagat Guru Shri Labhakti Sunda Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Kijaya Jayam Vishnupada Paramahamsa Paribra Jagachar Javajasto Telasuta Shri Srima Kuruchura Mani Sava Shastra Siddhanta Shila Bhakti Raka Akshrita Dev Goswami Maharaj Jai Nitya Leela Pravishtam Vishnupad Bhagavan Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarzati Thakur Ki Jai Rupa Nuga Guru Bhargya Ki Jai Nama Chaja Shila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Jai Rupa Sanatan Bhattar Ganath Shri Jeeva Gopal Bhattadas Raghana Sad Goswami Prabhu Ki Jai Sāpāśada Śrīmān Mahāprabhu ki jāi, Sarup Dhamadā Ramananda Rāi ki jāi, Jāi Śrī Jaitanya Sarazata Acharya Vrinda ki jāi, Samadaita Vaishnava Mandali ki jāi, Kol Kartel ki jāi, Śrī Harinama Sankirtan ki jāi, Nitai Gaura Preminandi Hari Hari Bho. So welcome everyone to our uh, Sunday Afternoon talk being broadcast from the East London branch of Sri Titanya Sarasat Mart. <coughs> it's our first broadcast for a couple of weeks. Last week I was in Villa Govinda Ashram in Italy for the uh, installation of their uh, lordships, Sri Sri Guru Goranga Gandharbika Gopinathju. Uh, and then also uh, Giridhari Bala Gopalji, their uh, Govindan Shila, which was already established there by Srila Govinda Maharaj. So, today uh, a little different class today because um, I can't read at the moment. <laughs> I have a, a bit of a problem with my eyesight right now, so... Um, I can't read, so I'm just going to have to um, wing it. You know, whatever, whatever I might have in my head, I'll have, that will have to come out instead. So, tomorrow is the Adivas of Gorapanima Festival, and Tuesday, uh, the appearance of Goranga Mahaprabhu, Sri Chaitanya Day, Sorry. and the. Uh, um, and then Wednesday, the Anandotsava of Jagannath Mishra. So we will be marking all of those. Um, tomorrow evening, we'll be, at 6 o'clock, we'll be joined, uh, sorry, 6.30, we'll join Madhusudan Maharaj for, um, by Zoom for uh, the, an Adivas talk with him. And then on uh, Tuesday, we will have an uh, all-day festival program recitation of Chaitanya Charitamrita and so on, Bhajan Kirtan, um, you know, starting from uh, early morning, but the main program from about 4 p.m. And that will go on until the evening. Uh, tomorrow is fasting day. We are fasting until the moonrise when Chaitanya Dev appeared, and then we'll take some Anukalpa, that means like Ikadashi type prasadam, and then on Wednesday, the the festival, the Jagannath Mishra Ananotsava, the when Jagannath Mishra, the uh, divine father of Sri Chaitanya Dev and Sati Mata, his divine mother, when they make a great Mahotsa festival in honor of their son, we'll begin the proceedings at about 11 a.m. on Wednesday. If you can join us, that will be very nice. Uh, I'm, especially, I mean physically, if you can join us, because we want to distribute Mahaprasadam, <coughs> Mahaprasadam, Mahaprasadam. Unfortunately, the technology doesn't allow us to do that via um, Zoom or um, Skype or anything yet. <laughs> so if you want Mahaprasadam, on that day you'll have to come <laughs> and be here. <coughs> That's what we would like, of course. So last week I was I had the honor of um, uh, doing the 
Prana Pratishta. It means the installation of the deities in Villa Govinda Ashram, a very beautiful Goranga Mahaprabhu and uh, uh, Radha and Krishna, whose names were Gandharvika, Gopinathju. So somebody, while we were there, asked me, why, why Gopinath? Is this a very high, you know, name, the deity of Sambandha Gyan. Sorry, the deity of Prayojana. The deity of Prayojana, Sambandha Gyan is uh, uh, Govindaji and uh, Abhideya Madan Mohan, is that right? I think so. Or the other way around. Govindaji is Abhideya yeah. Madan Mohan, uh, uh, Sambandha Gyan. But anyhow, so I... Uh, I don't know actually what is the, but it was the inspiration of um, Madhusudan Maharaj and Bhakti Sudhir Goswami Maharaj that <coughs> they would be, uh, that he was Gopinathju. And that is not surprising in our mot. The deities in Hapania, they are also Gopinathju, Guru Maharaj's, Guru Maharaj's birthplace. Mm. Uh, which Srila Govinda Maharaj said, I consider to be non-different from Barshana, the holy appearance place of Srimati Radharani. And the deities there are Radha Gopinathju. And Srila Govinda Maharaj's family deities in, in uh, uh, Bamanpara, they are also Radha Gopinathju. And we understand that those deities were given to Govinda Maharaj's ancestors by Bira Chandra, the son of Nityananda Prabhu. So much, some connection with Gopinathju we have. But I was thinking, Srila Guru Maharaj's explanation was that, uh, that we are the followers of the cowherd girls of Vrindavan. And Guru Maharaj said, these half-civilized jungle girls, they have invented this religion of worship of Lord Krishna. And that religion, we follow that. What, how they worship Krishna, we follow that. We, we are worshippers of their Krishna. And that, therefore their Krishna is Gopinath. Go, they are the gopis of Vrindavan. And Nath means the Lord. So he is the Lord, their Lord. But actually, more than that, he is, he is their Lord, but they are, they are his owners, if you like. They own him. And we are worshipping their Krishna. Once when the, I was on the plane going to India once, and one late Indian lady sitting next to me, we started talking, you know, and she said, she was very excited, she said, thank you for loving our God. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, oh, he is not just your God, but everyone's God. <laughs> Krishna is everyone. But this is a very nice idea, actually. I think that the residents of Vrindavan, they're, you know, telling that uh, uh, we are worshippers of Krishna. We are the, but they are also thinking he is our Krishna. That he belongs to us. And Krishna himself acknowledges this. He says, in the Gita I say, you know, that however one, um, you know, surrenders to me, I reciprocate to, with them of equal uh, measure. He said, but, it, but it, when it comes to you, he's speaking to the cowherd girls, when it comes to you, I can't keep that promise. Because what you have given to me is so much that it's impossible for me to properly reciprocate that. I feel so much indebted for your, the love that you have for me that I can't possibly reciprocate that properly. So this idea, and we, we use this term a lot in, the, in our um, Archan worship is Todia. Todia means his, belonging to him. So, we are all His, 
but the but the residents of Braja they are thinking he is ours. And this is uh, although it may seem the same thing, but it is a slight, subtle difference there. This idea of you know like possession that Krishna is their possession, and we love that idea. You know, we love that concept that. He is theirs to do with whatever they want. This is the the victory of the of the finite over the infinite. Is Guru Maharaj says this is impossible uh, to think that the finite can control the infinite, but by love it is possible. By love it is possible that the finite soul can control the infinite. Krishna is the infinite. Of course, it is something more than, we cannot say really that actually the, the uh, residents of Vrindavan are jivas as we are jivas. That we are tatasta jiva. Tatasta jiva means we, can, we are malleable. We can go this side or that side. And you know, here we are, this side. The rebels, but they they are part of the chit shakti, that means the the Lord's internal energy, eternal, uh, eternally giving satisfaction to their Lord. <coughs> and it is also con con I read, Jiva Goswami Prabhu says that once a tatasta jiva is is given entrance into the lila of Krishna, he's no longer considered a jiva. He's considered to be part of the chit shakti. Then he or she. So it is an extraordinary thing. So then, of course, Gopinath. And, and we know when Srila Govinda Maharaj would go to Hapania, which, uh, which Guru Maharaj referred to as your place. He said your place, because Govinda Maharaj. <coughs> taking a special interest in that place as his Guru Maharaj's appearance. Actually, the temple, the temple of uh, Chaitanya Sarasvat Martin Hapanya is where the deities are. That's the exact place where Guru Maharaj is, the, was born. That's where the maternity house was, where Guru Maharaj was born. So, and that was later was made into the temple. Huh? When? Yeah. When? It, well, it was it was within that, our time because because I remember Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj installed the deities there on that day, so it must have been eighty four, maybe eighty four. I'm thinking eighty four. That time, and I remember that one one American girl, Tapati. You remember Tapati? So she sewed their dress. She made their dress, and um, and Puri Maharaj was completely baffled by how how it worked, because you know they use Velcro, and they, you, they, in India they don't really use that, you know. Then uh, maybe they do now, some of them more, you know. But that, he couldn't figure out how to dress them at all. So so she had to go on the altar and show him how to how to dress the deity on that day. I don't think so. I mean there might be I've never seen it no. thank you thank you Ram <coughs> yeah yeah of course I heard some uh, you know, Maharaj uh, in India he is a worshipper of Radhasha uh, not from other Maharaj but he is very famous he said, oh, we cannot, uh, what is it called, pra do Pran Pratista to Sham, uh, Saligram Sila and Balamukunda, baby Krishna. But we can do Abhishek. Uh -huh. Because they are Supreme Lord. We can't. They say. Well, the, uh, the method that I, that I used for, of, uh, the Pran Pratista is a, is a booklet from 
um, which was compiled by Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj and, uh, and Shroti Maharaj, who were both um, senior disciples of, of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur. And they, those two were considered to be the, the authorities on the wor- deity worship within the Gaudiya mission. And, uh, and the book itself is compiled from the handwritten notes of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur. So, and, and the, the large part of that is the Prana Pratishta, the deity. Of course, it's not that... Um, it's not that by our performance of that ceremony that the Lord becomes present in the deity. He's Krishna is always Krishna. Krishna is always he is fully independent of that. So, but it's like if the king decides to come to your house, yeah, may have to make some kind of formal arrangement for that, isn't it? You know, it's not you just pop down to Tesco's and get some tea bags. The king's coming, you know, you have to make some proper arrangement for that. So also, so then then the proper procedure for welcoming the Lord is called Pran Pratishta. So, so then we do that. And uh, in, it's like the, in the, the formal part of that, by inviting him to be present in his, in his murti form. And... It's not. It's not entirely true to say that every murti of Krishna is Krishna, because we hear that uh, Advaita Acharya, when if he would bow down before any deity, if Krishna was not present in the deity, the deity would shatter. So, so, but generally we are thinking that that Krishna and Krishna's form they are the same, but it is like a formal a formal invitation for the Lord to be present there. And, uh, and we heard, <laughs> we heard from Guru Maharaj that in the, in the case of um, one ceremony, no, and Guru Maharaj said normally Shroti Maharaj would do the, would do the Pran Pratista everything, but this, on this, uh, this occasion, Sarasi Thakur asked Guru Maharaj to do it. So Guru Maharaj did everything, and he said, the last part, um, the final part is when you place the Tulsi and Chandan on the feet of the Lord and you, and you ask him to be fully present there and not to leave, basically. That's <coughs> how it goes. And, and because Guru Maharaj had not done it before, he did that. He put the Tulsi in, and he was thinking, because of the arrangement of the altar that was very high and he thought... If Prabhupada Sarasi Thakur, it'll be difficult for him to reach. So he did it. But he didn't realize that that was the one part of the ceremony that Sarasi Thakur did himself. So then when Sarasi Thakur came to place the Tulsi and Chandan on the feet of the deity, he saw that Tulsi and Chandan were already there. So then, then he said, oh, this is extraordinary. The deities have installed themselves. And uh, and Guru Maharaj said, "Oh, I felt terrible, you know, like I oh." He said, "But I didn't say anything." And he, then he said, "Later on, later on, he said he told someone else. Oh, these deities, they're so special. They installed themselves. The Tulsi and Chandan were there of their, their own accord, like this. He's t- telling people this." And Guru Maharaj said, oh, "I was feeling like really terrible. I should tell him. I should tell him." And he said. He said, then what the, what the, the cincher, the, you know, the clincher was that it was published in an article in, the, in their magazine that these deities had installed themselves and, you know, like all of this. And then Guru Maharaj said, I had to write a letter to Prabhupada, Sarasi Thakur, and say, I made a big offense. It, well, they didn't install themselves. It was me that did it, you know. I'd, I put the toss. I didn't know that that was what you did. I... I did it. I'm sorry. And if if you don't forgive me, I'm I'm finished. I'm nowhere, you know. And, and then Sarasi Thakur replied to Guru Maharaj in a letter and said, "For who is surrendered, there is never any question of offence." And while when Guru Maharaj was reading that, Bhakti Doita Madhav Maharaj was there, and he said to Guru Maharaj, "Oh, 
Prabhupada is giving a very high certificate to you. So we don't think that when we do that pran pratista that we are making Krishna present there. You know, you are, you're meant to touch the limbs and the eyes and in, and there's a mantra for all of those things to for the Lord's life air. Pran means life air, you know, all these things. So we do all that, but it's not, we think, that we are making Krishna present there, but we're just doing the formal thing. Like next year, right? there's going to be the formal coronation of King Charles. They'll do the anointing of the holy oil and the whole thing. We're going to have a holiday Hooray. for that. So, but but the actual the reality is the moment that Queen Elizabeth passed away, he became king didn't need any coronation that very moment he became the king <laughs> i saw on the, you maybe you've seen that magazine private eye they put on the front 74 year old man gets his first job after 30 years <laughs> but anyhow so but but when you understand the the uh, example and it, uh, immediately the, the queen passed away, he became king, without any formality or anything. But still, there will be a formal coronation to recognize that uh, publicly, and there'll be a holiday, everything like that. So in the same way, the Lord is the Lord, and when he comes by his own will, then, then we, there is some ceremony that we have to do to welcome him, to recognize that. So we did that last week, and I and I pray that they, if I made any offence, that they don't take any offence. You have to. You were, there's one part is you remove their blindfold, and then you have to touch their eye with a, tol, a twig of tulsi dipped in honey, and then you tell some mantra, and then the other eye dipped in ghee, you tell the mantra, and then you have to show a list of auspicious items to the Lord, his, his first vision. And that includes um, uh, the tall sea tree, the um, gold, silver, copper, virgin girls. That's another one. Yeah. Like little girls. We had to get these little girls dressed up with tea like everything and come present themselves before the Lord. They're considered to be very auspicious. And... Uh, Many things, a stone, earth, fragrance, oh, so many things. I had to do that, so that was part of it. And then Abhishek, we do it. Then there's Abhishek. First in Panchagavya, that means five things from the cow. Panchagavya is um, ghee and milk and yogurt and urine and dung from the cow. And there, and the they're bathed with that. And then up following that is is uh, Panchamrita, which is five nectars. So that is again milk and yogurt and ghee, but also honey and sugar water. They're bathed with that. Then they have a herbal bath and then they have a then they have a, a warm just warm water bath and everything finished. <laughs> and actually the whole thing from beginning to end takes four days. But um, we didn't have four days, so I had to condense it down into one day by, you know, not eliminating, but by leaving the non-essential things. But it was, uh, I think the Lord was satisfied. I hope that, I'm, what do I know about whether the Lord is satisfied? But we did our best to satisfy him. Mahaprabhu is different. Yeah, Mahaprabhu is standing like this. And uh, this is like uh, Mahaprabhu Bari, you know, um, Vishnu Priya's deity in Nabadi. Yeah. If you've ever been there, you'll see he's standing like this. And uh, and so these, this deity of Mahaprabhu like this also. And um, when we heard when Vishnu Priya, she had that deity made. And uh, th three times she rejected, and they brought the deity. No, 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 
not him, not him. And then the th fourth time, when they brought the deity before him, she covered her head with her sari. She recognized, oh, it is, it is him, the Lord. So Srila Govinda Maharaj, once he told Goswami Maharaj, if you want to, uh, no, Srila Guru Maharaj actually said, told Go Go Goswami Maharaj, if you want to see how a deity of Mahaprabhu should be, go and see Mahaprabhu Bari, Vishnu Priya's deity, then you'll see. But normally we are, he's standing like this or standing like this. And, uh, but not u so usual standing like this. What, what is the significance of all the hand positions? Well, I mean, that, this is Kirtan, obviously, and this. But, um, but this is for her. This is for Vishnu Priya, that he's giving his grace to her. And once, when we were in Kiev, the uh, the Veda Life Festival there, and there was a similar deity there, and they put placed the garland in his hands, where standing like this, he's holding the garland there, and Sri Govinda Maharaj remarked, he is offering a garland of Krishna Prema. Who will take that garland from him? Not me. <laughs> so, yeah, so very beautiful, but not usual. And on the Goswami Maharaj, actually, after the festival, he spoke on the next day and he said, don't, don't make this the fashion of, of making all deities of Mahaprabhu like this. It's a very, a very unique stance, style, like that. So. And Radha Gopinath. And Radha called Gandharbika. Guru Maharaj's Radharani is, is Gandharva. But sometimes he, he also said Gandharvika. But Gandharvika means when Radharani dances and sings, especially to please Krishna, she's called Gandharvika. So a very, very beautiful idea. And very beautiful deity also. So... <coughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Guru Mahaj is Radha. How do they choose the particular deities? How do they choose what? How do they choose those particular deities? How do they come from? You know, actually, they were given by Abhidhut Maharaj to them. And uh, he went, generally, the best Murti Wallas there in Jaipur. They make the best Murti Wallas. And um, some are famous and very rich because of that. You know, they make all the deities for Iskon. They make the deities for Shami Narayan Mission and uh, same Murtiwala. But like uh, his name's Pande, Pande, that Murtiwala, very rich. And he knows, you know, he knows if it's an Iskon deity, it should be like this. If it's for Gaudiya Mott, it should be like this. He knows everything. But they went to a different Murtiwala. And uh, they liked the, there was the murti of Krishna was already there, made, Abhidhut Maharaj said, and he, and he said, we'll purchase your, this deity of Krishna if you can make like a corresponding Radharani, but she has to be even more beautiful than Krishna. Can you do it? And he said, and unless we can, unless we are, you know, like, um, Satisfied that she's more beautiful than Krishna, that there's no deal. We're going to Pande. And you know, don't go to Pande. And, and really, oh, you can't. How beautiful her face, I can't say. Not that I've got any real appreciation for, you know, transcendental beauty, but just from like an objective point of view, it's so beautiful, so sweet. Very nice, very nice. They have they have only one dress though. They only got one dress, so and no one there who knows how to make dresses. But one one lady, Nirupama, she's she can sew. So they're now they're asking Ishanuga to make <laughs> So maybe she will. 
Anyway, it was a very nice, beautiful festival, very nice day. And well, I mean, it's still going on, I guess, for Gorpanima. And tomorrow is the Adivas, Gorpanima Adivas, and then Gorpanima on Tuesday. So. So was it already made, or was it? It was there, and they buy it. Which? Uh, in Italy, Taku. No, they got from Jaipur. Yeah, but was it made there? It was made there, yeah. Yes. I mean, manifested there, were you saying? Yeah. Not made, no one makes Krishna. No, but I mean, how high was uh, that measurement? That was kind of um, a mysterious thing. Because, you know, when Guru Maharaj sent Radha Shamsunda, he gave the, he gave the dimensions and proportions. That is, it is nothing like that. Similar. Yeah, Mahaprabhu will be this high, Krishna this high, Radharani this high, and as it is in Navadweep also. But Avadut Maharaj is Avadut, so he just did his he just did his own way. So they're very small compared to Mahaprabhu. They have to stand on a big on a big like lotus flower about this big, each of them. <coughs> but very beautiful. And uh I was very felt very blessed to be part of that for so many years. They were a little reluctant to do because in the time of Srila Govinda Maharaj, he installed a Govardhan Shila there, Giridhari Balagopaljiu, Gurudev gave him the name, that name, or revealed that name to us. But they never thought. But Srila Gurudev said maybe one day. Mahaprabhu and Radha Govinda will come. Because that's our line, actually. That's mm -hmm. our line. And sometimes people ask us, oh, where's Nityananda Prabhu? Like, Why haven't you got Nityananda Prabhu? We get that a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got Lord Chaitanya, but where's Nityananda Prabhu? But we don't just make it up, you know. It's not just like, oh, well, we couldn't afford a Nityananda or <laughs> something like that. It's not just made up. I mean, first of all, it's... It's rasa, rasa bas to have Nityananda Prabhu and Radha Krishna together. And you'll see in most temples where there is Gornitai and Radha Krishna, they're on separate altars. And, and if not on separate altars, they, there will be a screen between them. Because Nityananda Prabhu is Baladev. And Krishna won't play happily with Radharani in front of his older brother. That is just normal. So then, so when Radha and Krishna play together, uh, Balaram abs absences himself from there. He's not present there. So for this reason, but, but that's one side, but the, the other side is that this is the vision um, Adopted, or you know, can say uh, revealed to us by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur that Mahaprabhu Sri Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahayanya. It is to show us that Lord Chaitanya is Radha and Krishna combined. And it, this revelation is given in the Ramananda Sambhad in the, in the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. It is considered to be the highest revelation of divinity ever. Because when that conversation, Guru Maharaj said, I always get my support from this conversation of, on the banks of the Godavari between Mahaprabhu and Rai Ramananda. And in that conversation, it starts off Mahaprabhu asking, what is, what is Krishna consciousness? And uh, he gives some then Ramananda gives some reply. Maybe first reply is, who performs Varnashram perfectly for a hundred births to satisfy Vishnu? That is, that is bhakti. Mahaprabhu said, that's superficial, go deeper. And then different, different, different replies, and always Mahaprabhu is not satisfied. No, is, that is also superficial, go deeper, go deeper. Then finally, not finally, but then, Maha, then Ramananda says, Sarva Dharma Purichaja Mamikam Sharanam Raja. 
Ham tam sarva pape bio moksha ishami masucha. Where Krishna says, whatever you think is your dharma, just forget all that, just surrender to me. I'll protect you from any sin. You will come to me, don't be afraid. Then, uh, then Mahaprabhu said, yes, this is good, but go deeper. Even then he's not satisfied with that. Go deeper, go deeper. And then finally, finally Mahaprabhu comes to the, to the position of Uddhava and quoting Uddhava saying that when I, what I saw in Braja, the, the love of the residents of Braja and especially the, the Braja gopis, then I could understand really what is devotion. And if I get the opportunity to be born as a blade of grass in Vrindavan, so that maybe one day their lotus feet may touch me, that will be, I consider, the highest attainment in life. One more question. The going there to the in Jaipur, how that was restored? Sorry, what? Going there to the no, they were taken there from Brindavan. Yeah, but when, when Aurangzeb saw, when Aurangzeb was the king, he could see from, from his palace that there's a, a, a light. And, uh, and in the night time, and he was very much um, disturbed by that. So he sent his men, go and find out what that light is. They came back. It is the temple of... Radha Govinda Ji in Brindavan, there they burn ghee every night in the in the tower in honor of Govinda Ji. So then Aurangzeb decided to go and smash that temple. That was his main hobby, smashing temples, Aurangzeb. So then then Radha Govinda every day the sun shines in the north, the people of Vajay would Yes. Then, then Govindaji came in the in the dream of Maharaj Jai Singh, who was the king of Jaipur, and said, "You've made this beautiful city according to all, you know, Vastu and Vedic um, dimensions, but you made a, one mistake. That was you put yourself in the center. Well, I should be in the center." Yeah. So now prepare a temple for me in the palace grounds. I'm coming. And Jai Singh did that, immediately woke up and did that. And then a few days later, the priests of Govindaji, they bought him there from Vrindavan because they told, he told the priests, Aurangzeb is coming, he'll smash our temple. Take me to Jai Singh, he'll protect me. And it's true, actually, um, Aurangzeb called Jai Singh the lion, and he could he could never defeat him, because and mainly because of how the city is designed, that it's surrounded on three sides by high mountains, and the fourth, the front is a, a huge wall, and gates and so on, and within the within the city, there's so much agricultural ground that. They can withstand any siege. They grow their own food inside there. So, you know, stay outside and siege the city as long as you like. We're fine in here, growing everything. It looks very formidable when you enter between the two mountains. Yeah. You can see the old fortresses on, each, on right. the top of each mountain. Yeah. So people coming in there will be like the 300 Spartans, you know. Yeah. It'd be uh, impenetrable. Really. Yeah. Of course, now you could go with helicopter gunships, yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> in those days it was <coughs> impossible. Anyway, but what was I saying before that? Oh, yeah, so then Mahaprabhu, he's asking to, uh, he's asking um, Ramananda Rai, is there, so is there anything more? And Ramananda says, not from the scripture, but my, in my own heart I can think of something more. But I'm, I'm shy to say. And Mahaprabhu said, no, you say. And he said, Mahaprabhu Sri Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahayanya, that you are 
the combined form of Radha and Govinda, and Mahaprabhu put his hand over Ramananda's mouth and said, no, this is too much. Then, but then, he showed that, he showed this vision to Ramananda, and Ramananda fainted when he saw that, that, it, that, Radha and, that Mahaprabhu is indeed the combined form of Radha and Krishna. He fainted to see that, and when he again became conscious, he just saw that sannyasi sitting there on the banks of the river. So this is the vision which Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasri Thakur wanted to promote to the world. And that's why this is the configuration of our altar. And every altar of, of the Gaudiya Sampradaya, more or less, having this same, this same configuration. And it is not that we are, you know, um, being d diminishing or disrespecting Nityananda Prabhu. We don't, as I said, we don't make it up. It is how, how it is. It's Siddhanta. Some man came once, not so long ago, a friend of ours. He came to the temple and he said, you know, we like your altar and everything, but how come you, like, why don't you just put some representation of Jesus on there and something of Allah and something of Buddha and like, so no, it's not like we we decided that we will make our altar like this. We didn't just like put our heads together and one day say, you know, and make some kind of kitchery altar, you know, cover all the bases. Guru Maharaj said during the Second World War, he knew one Brahmin that in his house he had like, you know, all the gods and goddesses. But also he had a picture of Adolf Hitler on his altar and he used to do puja every day. Guru Maharaj said, just, just in case, you know, that he'd be okay. Just in case. <coughs> yeah. So, this is, so Srila Govinda Maharaj had said that maybe, you know, over 20 years ago. This will happen in Go Villa Govinda one day. And, you know, by their... I believe that those devotees, they're very special, those devotees there. And yeah. I believe that their... that Gopinath was attracted by their serving mood and decided to come there of his own free will. Again, please, you know, whatever I say, you have to understand that I don't really know. I don't have any special insight into that. But that's my feeling, that he came there of his own will. And they're very enthusiastic to do that service, really enthusiastic. I asked them when I got there, you know, it's like such a big responsibility to install the deity, because it's forever. It's not just for now. I feel it very acutely when Srila Govinda Maharaj gave me that responsibility. Like, what, when I'm dead, then what? Who will take their service. But at the same time, we have faith that the Lord will bring his servitors to do the service. But it is a responsibility that the, their worship, their service has to go on even when we are gone. It still has to go on. And that is a big responsibility. And I said, are you sure you're, you're ready for that? They're ready for it. So what happened to the picture they were worshipping? They, they, they put in put in the, another room. Yeah, it's still there. They they were thinking maybe we'll keep and and I said this is just be confusing, you know, too much confusing to have two Radha Govind like you know. So they've come in this way. They're the same, same but different. In in Thailand, they have they you see people wearing t-shirts. They're same same but different, <laughs> and they say that a lot over there. Same same but different. So we're thinking like that, you know. Gopal told Madhavendra Puri, "Go and bring sandalwood for me," yeah. and uh, and when he was coming back, when he came to to um, the temple of uh, Gopinath, and who was then. He was called Gopinath, but after Madhavendra Puri, so, um, what do you, would you say, adventure there with Gopinath, he became known as 
Kir Chor Gopina. He stole the Kir for Gopina from for uh, Madhavendra Puri. But Gopal told um, Madhavendra, "Oh, you don't need to bring all that sandalwood to back to Brindavan. You can leave it with Gopina because it, he's me. We're the same, you know. We're the same." And yeah, so. Krishna has, has some wonderful pastimes as the, as the deity. Very extraordinary things happen. So like that. And it was very, very beautiful ceremony, very auspicious. And... Uh, yes. <coughs> yep, yeah, Govindaji. The there are many, there are many deities of the Goshamis in Brind in Jaipur, yes. from Brindavan. Original Radha Damodara there, original Radha Gopinath, original Radha Shamsundar. They're all they're all from Brindavan, being worshipped in Jaipur to this day. Pradamaya means in in dear me. In Navadip there's the temple of Prodamaya. You must have seen. And the Paramatala. It's a, a the deity form is Kali Kalima. But Prodamaya actually means Jogamaya. She's the she's the uh, arranger of of Krishna Lila in the dawn. But the common people don't see her like that. They see Kali and worship and worship her as Kali. But those who have some deeper vision, they say Prodamaya, Jogamaya. We remember, you must remember, we went to that temple of Durga in, is it Whips Cross? Or? Yeah. With Gurudev. Yes. And we... And, and Durga Devi, and yeah. all deities. Yeah, but, yeah, but the main deity was was uh, Durga, and the, I remember. And Gurudev, but when Gurudev he bowed down before her, and he and and uh, he told Jai Jogamaya. Yeah. He didn't tell Durga. He told Jogamaya. Yeah. So it's a, it depends on the on the vision of those because who can see. There's some representation here in the material world. <coughs> and then there is the but that's the reflection of the of their actual representation in the spiritual world. So Prodamaya in Navadvip is mentioned by Bhaktivinoda Thakur as being Jogamaya. <coughs> Gurdamaya was protecting the dam from um, intruders like um, Gyanis, you know, people who are mm. searching for knowledge and they think that they can get the Holy Spirit by having, just having knowledge, but you know, you cannot enter there without darkness. So Gurdamaya, she illusions them. And next to that temple also, there's a, a very beautiful temple of Lord Shiva inside, inside a banyan tree. Big Shiva Lingam there. And uh, it's very beautiful, actually. And Bururaj? Bururaj is somewhere else. No, it's in, um, near to, uh, near to uh, Nandan Ghat. And uh, but within within Gaudra Mandala. Mm. 
I believe it's a very mysterious place. And we heard, actually I heard from Bhakti Pramod Purimaraj, he told me that um, that where that area, Paramatala area is, at Sarasri Thakur, he gave a lecture there one time. This is before Guru Maharaj joined the mission. Puri Maharaj was senior to Guru Maharaj in years. And, uh, and the local smartas, they had, um, they had laid a trap for Sarasri Thakur there. And they, to and they told all of the shopkeepers to, to board their shops and not to give shelter to any of Sarasri Thakur's followers. And when Sarasri Thakur got up to give his lecture, they pulled cloths off the, the, these carts and then they had house bricks, like piles of house bricks. They began pelting him with house bricks. And uh, with, the inten with the intention of killing him, and he fled from there, and he was with Keshav Maharaj. Keshav Maharaj was a, a um, Vinod Bihari Brahmachari then, or white clad anyway, he was white clad. Is that Ojalami? No, no, um, Keshav Maharaj was a Prabhupada Sanyas guru. Oh, that. <coughs> and, uh, um, and they you know, they were being pursued down the back streets and one one person gave them entrance into their house. Everyone else had been like threatened not to give entrance. So they went into the house and and um Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj, he looked very similar to Sarasri Thakur, his features. And he was dressed in white dress and Sarasri Thakur in Sanyas dress and so then they changed cloth, and then um, and then Kate of Marge went out and like here I am, <laughs> and they ran after him, pelting him with bricks, and Sarasri Thakur was able to make his escape. That was one of the early the early days of the Gaudiya mission. Surely there must have been some reaction to this activity. Sure there was, yeah. I can't tell you there was like a, a big earthquake or something, I don't know. But I'm sure there was, yeah. Did, did they mellow up then? Did they sort of like <laughs> at one point? Yeah, I mean, later on they had to accept. They had to accept. It was the same with, with in Vrindavan, when Sarasri Thakur first came to Vrindavan, and he came in a motor car, and that was like completely unheard of, that an Acharya would go in a motor car. He came in a motor car and all the temples locked their doors and wouldn't give admission to him and his followers, except for the Radha Raman temple. No, only Radha Raman temple was the only temple that allowed Sarasri Thakur to entrance and his followers. And uh, they recognized... Um, that he had some something to say, not just so he was driving in the car. And then gradually, um, because they were held in such high regard, the Radharaman temple, in fact, their Mahant of their temple was the mayor of Vrindavan at one point. So then all the other temples gradually, they followed suit. And Sarasri Thakur was, Srila Sri Ramana said, his approach was mainly revolutionary. You know, he was, and he he wasn't a supporter of the the caste Goswamis, which are, there's so many in Vrindavan. You know, that have their make their living by owning a temple and a temple deity and all of those things. But they saw something from him, and there are many things he established which were new. And now many of the temples in Vrindavan have also adopted that, following his example. Then, not so long ago, the uh, the Mahant of the they are you know they are fo followers of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. 
You can't say they were their descendants of Gopal Bhatta Goswami because he was a brahmachari, he never married, so he didn't have any children as such, but they're following it like that. And then uh, the one of them was the um the Mahant there, I forget which one it was, but he um he was also the mayor of Brindavan and when uh he, when Goswami Maharaj was visiting there, he told, he was all excited and he said, he told uh, that Mahant, oh, every, every atom of Navadweep can uh, show Brindavan in all its fullness. Every atom of Navadweep. And that devotee said to Goswami Maharaj, oh, you must be a follower of Sridhar Maharaj. <laughs> only Sridhar Maharaj says these kind of things. <laughs> and of course it was true. So they have some appreciation. And Srila Govinda Maharaj, he sent, he sent Bhakti Lalita. When, when we got the, the temple in Seva Kunj, next to Radha Damodar Mandir, that was also a miraculous thing, but somehow that came to Srila Govinda Maharaj. And uh, and they had um, the deities were they were already were there Radharasa Bihari small small deities but then they have like full size deities installed there Mahaprabhu and Radharasa Bihari but um, Srila Govinda Maharaj said I want to do the worship as they do in Radharaman Temple so then he sent Bhakti Lalita and uh, others to meet with them and she told me she said I asked. Um, okay, because we know that, you know, um, that uh, Radha Raman, he manifested from a Shalagram Shila by his own, you know, manifestation. He said, so, but you're telling Radha Raman, so where is Radha? She asked. And they told her, here you see, they have, an, they have a, a, a cement block or, or concrete block. And and they dress that and worship that as Radharani. They they carved Sri Radha, her name in that, and they worship her name as Radharani. And Guru Dave appreciated that. Oh, that's a very beautiful idea. I went there a few years ago during Kartik, and we were waiting in there for the for the arti to begin. And. Uh, that, you know, there's a kind of a tunnel where you come in to get into the temple, and outside they have like a traffic lights. And if it's red, it means there's no darshan. If it's green, there's darshan, you know. So <coughs> we, we came in because they said it's like five, ten minutes, or it'll be that, it'll be arti and darshan and everything. And yeah, they're very small, I'm sure. And they're, and they're not even like at the front, you, you know, they're right kind of in recessed in the back of the altar there. but... But um, while we were waiting, there were these, the, you know, like in every temple you have like these old ladies that just stay in that temple. In Navadweep they have the old ladies that they just, all they do all day is they just go through the, the bags of spices and take the stones out and things, you know, spices and dal and that's what they do all day, you know, make garlands and very happy to do that. If in Radha Raman temple there is a they started fire in a kitchen 500 years ago. Oh, and it's never and been extinguished. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. Then, uh, anyway, these ladies were there. Maybe like Maybe more. four or five ladies only. Yeah. And then they're singing. But they're singing, you know, and because it's uh, no cartel, no drum, no anything. Just singing. And and, uh, and they were singing, because it's Kartik, they're singing Dhammadarastakam. Nama Mishuram Satchida. They're singing that. And then they, when they finish that, then they're singing another song. And I'm listening to that song and I, oh, it's Gopi Gita. Gopi Gita from Srimad Bhagavatam. Tavagatam Ritam Tattva Jeevanam Srimad Atatam. And I, when I heard those words, oh, I said to Goswami Maharaj, oh, they're singing Gita, um, Gopi Gita, isn't it? Gopi Gita. Yes, it is. That is very beautiful. But 
I remember Srila Guru Maharaj asking Govinda Maharaj, what, what was your feeling when you read the Gopi Gita? And Srila Govinda Maharaj said, there's a complete change in, in uh, the mood of Srimad Bhagavatam. So right up until this point, the great Veda Vyas, he's making so many proclamations, you know, about the absolute truth. But then when it comes to the Gopi Gita, that changes to this very, like, playful song. And uh, he says, Govinda Maharaj said, it made me think that it's like an elephant dancing. <coughs> Veda Vyas, he's the great elephant, you know, like regal, ma majestic, everything he's given so far. And then, what would it be like if that elephant started dancing? Like, everyone would be amazed to see that, isn't it? So in the, he said, this was my feeling when, when the Gopi Gita begins. My feeling was, oh, an elephant is dancing now. And everyone will be so amazed to see such a thing. The, um, I once read uh, someone went, did an analysis on the uh, chand or the meters in the Bhagavatam. And at that point, the meters change as well, yeah. the time signatures. Yeah. They go into weird things, odd things like 11 and 14, if you understand what I'm talking about. They, it, but it, it gives a sense of... <coughs> It, it gives a sense of more adventure or more, yeah, you know, yeah. it sets a mood. And uh, so the, the whole thing is very purposeful. Yes. Is, is the point of it. Yeah. Do you know what each, which each meter means? Yeah, some of them, yeah. But like, well, I mean, for example, I, I'm kind of off topic, but in movie soundtracks you often hear them switch to seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in order to, when there's a car chase or something, right, right. something going on. And the Bhagavatam does that with its poetry, with its meter. So, you know, it's like, it's, a, it, it's such a purposefully, sure. and scientifically and exquisite piece of literature, you know, among other things. It's not ordinary Indeed. in any sense of the word. It's, a, it's an uh, absolute transcendental masterpiece, you know, yeah. from every, every perspective. It's just, uh, you know, meant to evoke certain emotions and succeeds, you know? Sorry, it's kind of no, deviating. No, no, it's, no, no, it's not deviating at all. It's <coughs> helping us to understand. That is, Srimad Bhagavatam itself, Srila Guru Maharaj said, the junior most of the scriptures, but with the senior most thought. Because we can say, right, that sometimes that Veda Vyasa is told as the author of the Vedas, but he's not the author. He's the compiler of the Vedas. Yeah, and there and so many different Rishis and Munis and so on have given the Vedic literature and Veda Vyas has compiled it all together. That was his purpose because he knew in Kali Yuga no one will be able to remember anything. So if it's not written down it'll be lost. So that was his task to do all that. But finally we know <clears throat> when he was finished, he wasn't satisfied with that. He didn't feel, and in, in fact, he expressed this to his guru, Devashi Narad, that I, I don't feel how I think I should feel. You know, like that I've completed what I was tasked to do, but I don't feel the satisfaction that I think I should feel. Why is that? And Narad said, because what you've done so far is you've made a jungle of, of religious thought. And anyone who's trying to understand the real purport, the inner purport of the, of the scriptures, they'll just be lost in that. There's, there's so many different opinions in the Veda. And you've, you've given them all. And, you know, and we know that according to the author and according... Then, that's right how it should be, but he said, but the main the main purport of the Vedic scripture you've hinted at it here and there, you've given it here and there, but not explicitly. You haven't given it explicitly. So then he said, Now you have to start another work, and this will be your like, you know, opus day, your your 
the sum and bonum of your own spiritual realization. Remember, the Asadev isn't uh, um, stagnant. He also is evolving spiritually. So when he, from when he began compiling the Vedas till, till the end of that, then his own spiritual realization is becoming deeper and deeper and stronger and more percolated. Is, until finally, now you give what you should have given, you know, like the, the conclusion. And this will be your, your work, your greatest work. And so uh, Narad gives him those four root verses and so you meditate on them and everything will come from that. So then right in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, it says that anything which is superfluous to the so the understanding of real religion is rejected from this book. And, and re religious teaching of dharma, artha, karma, moksha, rejected as kaitavya dharma, cheating religion, because, because it neglects to give the fifth end of life, which is Krishna Prema. And that's what you need to give in a scientific way. You need to give that. And that's when he began the Srimad Bhagavatam. So, and Guru Maharaj say, so the junior most of all the scriptures, but with the senior most thought. That's, it is the most important work of Veda Vyasa. If everything else was lost and only Srimad Bhagavatam remained, nothing would be lost. Everything that is essential to spiritual life is found in there. <coughs> One more question then. Napoleon came here and he came with his deity here. Mm -hmm. So does he carry the deity everywhere he goes? Sorry, what, what's the question? Does he, he came with the deity of Radharani, small deity. Yeah. Same Radharani. Yeah, replica. Yeah. Replica. Yeah. Most of the Tathaka, you know, who preach it, they carry. Okay. Yeah, it's not the same. No, it's not that you go to Radharaman Temple and they are oh, Pundarik's got it, got him this week. You know, there's nothing, nothing there. Yeah. In terms of Srimad Bhagavatam, what is the proper mood leading to Bhagavatam? Is it something that you read silently and understand, or do you recite it? Either, I mean, the the real the thing, the real thing is, is that w to approach it with the attitude of service, not not exploration or you know um, how you say with the in inquisitive inquiry, but rather as, as a, a service um, centric. And if you know that can be a re recitation or it can be silent, but. The main thing is to study Srimad Bhagavatam under a Vaishnava. Otherwise we maybe um, misunderstand. So that's why there's the book Bhagavat and the person Bhagavat. So both are Bhagavat. But in, from our point of view, the person Bhagavat is more essential than the book Bhagavat. Because the book Bhagavat won't correct you if you misunderstand if you read something and misunderstand it the book won't correct you if you fall asleep while reading it and many people fall asleep during Srimad Bhagavatam class we know and you fall asleep and you drool all over the Bhagavatam it won't it won't wake you up but the person Bhagavat will wake you up now wake up and listen so it's always, it's always best to read Srimad Bhagavatam under the direction of a Vaishnava. That, having said that, some people say, oh, it's too high, we shouldn't study it, we shouldn't study it. We should study it. That's our, our whole religion is based on Srimad Bhagavatam. We should study it. But it is true that we should study under a qualified Vaishnava. But Srila Prabhupada, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada, his elaborate purports of Srimad Bhagavatam are 
the next best thing to studying it under a Mahabhagavat do it, because he's a Mahabhagavat devotee, then all those purports he's given us is so that we don't misunderstand it. So we can't now study directly under him, but we have all of his purports by which we, we won't, hopefully won't misunderstand. But even so, in the association of devotees is the best um, way of uh, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. We should hear Srimad Bhagavatam. And necessarily, we, the questions will come. So, you know, I was telling some of the new devotees over in Italy, it's good to keep a little notebook when you, you know, you're asking them, anyone have any questions? Have questions. Are they like, okay, you've understood everything perfectly, yeah? No, because they, you know, didn't write it down when that question came up. They must come up. If you're a progressive student, the question must come to you. And then you need that question to be satisfied. What does this mean? What does that mean? We need, we need uh, to have... To have questions. Otherwise what? Unless you understand. When Mahaprabhu heard Vedanta from Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. He just sat like a, like a statue. And Sarvabhama said. Seven days I've been speaking to you. And not nothing. You've not said a word. Not asked a question. Not said, and I'm thinking. Do you understand anything I've said at all? Mahaprabhu said, yeah, I understand Vedanta very well, but I'm not, I can't understand what you're saying. <coughs> and Sarvabhoma was a little upset by that. You could Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was the greatest pundit of all, of all India. That's what his name literally means, Sarvabhoma. In the world, he's the greatest pundit in the whole world. And Mahaprabhu took him down. And made him into a Vaishnava. Hare Krishna. Somebody asked Sarasri Thakur this question. If all of the associates of Mahaprabhu, if they're all Parshadas, means, you know, if you look in, what is it, uh, what, what's it called, that uh, Gorgana Desh Tipika, there you can find that this devotee in Mahaprabhu's Leela is this devotee in Krishna's Leela, right? So, <coughs> his eternal associates. Then, then they said, so how is that actually helpful to us if all of Mahaprabhu's devotees, they're all eternal associates? You know, then where's the, where, where are those who aren't, uh, you know, who have been like new recruits? If we want to be new recruits, where is that in, in the... Chaitanya Charitamrita. Even Jagai and Madai are Jai and Vijay of Vaikuntha, right? So then where where? And and Saraji Thakur gave a list of the new recruits, but top was Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. This was he was a new recruit to Mahaprabhu's um mission, you can say. Of course it's said that he was Brihaspati, but that's another thing. Learning like Brihaspati. Yes. So someone saying, because of mercy of Vimala Devi, <coughs> he came on the earth. So that's why his name is Vimala Prasad. Yeah, that's our, um, he's a Vaishnava. Bhaktivinoda Thakur named his children. Mm -hmm. More or less all of them are something Prashad. Bhimala Prashad, Kamala Prashad, Lalita Prashad. They were all something Prashad. Yeah, but this is Bhimala Devi. I know. In Jagannath Temple. Yeah. Uh, goddess. Yes. And uh, she has given that boon kind of. Yes. transcendental history of the Krishna consciousness movement, actually. And up until Bhaktivinoda Thakur, it was almost lost. 
But Bhaktivinoda Thakur re-established that by his writings. And Sarasri Thakur fully uh, dedicated, he told, <laughs> and Guru Maharaj said he had, what, 11 sons? Yeah, and two daughters. And, and Guru Maharaj said, of those 11, only two were Vaishnavas. And one of those was a Sahaja. So, only really Sarasati Thakur from that. But everything, although you know, Bhaktivinoda Thakur gave him Harinam, but, but father can't give the um, Gayatri Diksha has to be given by uh, uh, the Vaishnava. So he recommended Gorky Shodas Babaji Maharaj for his Diksha. And he refused Sarasri Thakur maybe three times. But Sarasri Thakur told him, No, Mahaprabhu said, You have to give me. And he said, Okay, I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask him. Then the next time they met, he said, Did you ask? He said, Oh, I forgot. Oh, I forgot, I'll ask him. Anyway, but substantially Bhaktivinoda Thakur was the guru of Sarasati Thakur. And everything he did, his deity was Radha Vinod. You know, that everywhere, everything was Vinod because of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And uh, all his preaching was about Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur's writings are very revolutionary. He had a he had a very expert quality that he could take very high and complex spiritual subject matters and and condense them down into very simply understood um, explanations. And our Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Rakak Sri Dev Goswami Maharaj, similar type of uh, um, ability to do that. And Guru Maharaj said, anyone who showed even the slightest interest in the teachings of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he would get the blessing and the attention of Sarasati Thakur. And he said, when I wrote this, I wrote this poem, Bhaktivinoda Viraha Dasakam, and I believe that was uh, the key to his affection for me. And when Sarasri Thakur read that, he said, oh, this is very fine. Um, and uh, happy style, he told to Guru Maharaj. And, And then another time when he, he asked, they published it in the Gaudiya magazine, and he asked, who wrote this? He said, Sri Maharaj wrote this. And Sarasri Thakur said, no, Sri Maharaj did not write this. Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote this through him. Uh, it's very high conceptions given in there. And Sarasri Thakur's remark also was, after reading that, now, now I am confident that although I may leave this world, there is one person who can fully and properly represent what I came to give, and that is Sridhar Maharaj. And in a subsequent lecture he referred, he was talking about the devotees that were present at a particular gathering, and he said, and Shastra Nipuna Sridhar Maharaj, he was also present there. Shastra Nipuna means a genius of scripture. This kind of certificate he gave to Guru Maharaj. One more question. Mm-hmm. In the Trickle Wood, there is a Gaudiya Mat. Mm-hmm. Some Western lady was in charge of that. Do you know about that? Well, originally it was the house of, of Vinodvani. She was a disciple of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasri Thakur, Western disciple. Western? Yeah, she's an English lady. I used to go there a long time ago. And they used to do Tulsi Aarti. It was in the time saying big people are <coughs> playing ganja or something. 
some of the scientists and he said, no, no, it's not a gun, there is the holy tree. The holy tree is Anyway, she she left that she left that house in her will to Sarazi Tako. Yes. And we have a picture of her painted on the wall here now. Oh, okay. Shown on somebody's iPhone. Okay. Uh huh. Betty something I forget what her full name is. Now. Anyway, and there was another lady too. It was in newspaper or something. Yeah, many years ago. Yeah, another lady. Two ladies who were disciples of Sarazi Thakur in that time. That's a very rare thing. Yeah, he had two two English disciples and uh, and two German disciples. Yeah, one was um, his name was Sadananda. He's very famous. Have you ever read his book? Yeah, I have. Yeah. It's very nice, actually. Beautiful. Nice. And the other one was was Herr Schultz. Pardon? The other oh, one was Herr is. Schultz. And uh, they met in the concentration camp in India because they were both German, German. during the war. Then uh, they were arrested because it, India was, was allied with Britain or part of the British Empire at that time, actually. So, because they were Germans, they were arrested and put in a concentration camp. We also had concentration camps. Most so. of the ones that jumped in the, the, the big vat of water without their clothes on. <laughs> yeah, not a big vat, but they were. They there was a complaint against them when they were living in the mott that they were bathing naked, mm. and so Sarazi Tarko said, "Just build a." Build a is their custom. Build a bu building, and they can play happily in it. <laughs> he wasn't so. You know, he didn't want to make people into Indians, you know, or Bengalis. He wanted to. He wanted to introduce Krishna consciousness to the world. So you know, every every country, every have their own culture and their you know. Um, habits and so on, they may not be considered civilized. <laughs> Wasn't that what they said to Mahatma Gandhi? What do you think about Western civilization? And his reply was, I think it would be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> but we are what we are. We're not we're not our it is not our ambition to become perfect Bengali gentlemen or anything, but it is our ambition to become servants of Mahaprabhu. That is what we want. And not just direct servant, but das, 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 anu das. When Mahaprabhu says that, it's not just hyperbole or, you know, some poet, poetic ex um, expression, but it is. Uh, statement of the truth when Mahaprabhu told Naham Bipro na Rapati na Pivaisho na Shudra Naham Bani na Chagriha na Vanastir Jatirva Kintu Prachant na Kila Paramananda Purnamritam De Gopi Bharta Pada Kamalayo Das 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 Anudas I'm not a Brahmin, I'm not a Katriya, I'm not a Vaisha or a Shudra. I'm not a brahmachari or a grihasta or a vanaprastha or a sannyasi. Then what am I? I am simply the servant of the servant of the servant of the ever-expanding ocean of bliss, the master of the gopis, Sri Krishna. That's my ego, he's told, telling. So this should be our, what we aspire for. And, and it is, that is... Uh, Crucial to that, das, 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 anu das. Guru Maharaj said, not first rank, or second rank, or even third rank, but maybe fourth rank. You can't become Mother Jashoda, you can't become Subal Shaka, you can't become Nanda Maharaj. Those places are already there, eternally taken there, you know. But there is a place for you all, for all of us there. We may not be able to understand from here, what that is. 
but it is for all of us. Guru Maharaj would say, you are designed and destined for that. It is why you exist. It's just we got a little confused along the way, thinking we exist for something else. <coughs> we exist for that. We exist to be instrumental in satisfying Krishna. That sounds mad, doesn't it? You know, How can I satisfy Krishna? What can I do to satisfy Krishna? Krishna has everything. He's fully self-satisfied. You think, well, I'm a good cook. I'll cook something for Krishna. Come on. Radharani is Krishna's cook. What, Durvasa Muni, he, he gave her a blessing that whatever this girl cooks will taste of ecstasy. And then when Mother Jashoda heard that, she said, oh, you have to come every day and cook something for my boy. This is how their relationship began, so to say. A way to a man's heart is through his stomach. So Mother Jashoda, Radharani, they're Krishna's cooks. What are you going to cook? <laughs> in comparison. Like, what are we going to do? But but also we hear, right? Vidura, Vidura's wife, when Krishna came to her house, Vidura was, although he was a great Brahmin, he was poor. He was a poor man. And, when, and one day Krishna just turned up on the doorstep. Vidura wasn't there. Come in, Vidura's wife. She's. Can you imagine like how much of a fluster you'd be in if you open the door and there's Lord Krishna standing there. What are you going to do? Okay, come on in. And so she's looking to something to offer to him. Can't find anything. Right? You know, she's old Mother Hubbard. When she went there, the cupboard was bare, and the only thing they had was like a bunch of bananas. That was the only thing, any only food they had in the whole house. So then she comes out and she's offering Krishna these bananas, but she's in such a fluster that she's peeling the banana and throwing away the banana and giving Krishna the skin of the banana. And Krishna's eating. Krishna's eating that. Then suddenly, like halfway through this, Vidura comes home. And he's not alone, his others with him. And he opens the door and he sees his wife feeding Krishna banana skins. And he's like, oh my God. I know we're poor, but you know, come on, at least give him the banana, not the banana skin. And he's like chastising his wife. And then, but Krishna says, Oh, no, 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 Vidura, you don't understand. I'm not eating banana or banana skin. I'm eating love. She's offering with love. That's what I'm eating. So Guru Maharaj said, Krishna is a consumer of hearts. That's his food, the heart. He wants your heart. So, you know, it doesn't matter what you can do or not do in this world. None of it is going to impress him. In fact, they say that, don't they? If you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> you know, so, but So really, we don't have anything from this side that we can give to Krishna that will be of even the remotest interest to him. But you have your heart. And that's what Krishna wants. He wants you to give your heart to him. That's why he says, you know, in the in the Gita, Manmana Bhava Mad Bhakto, Majajinam Namaskuro, Mami Vaisasi Satyam Te Pratijani Priyoshine. Twice that verse comes in the in the Gita. In the eighteenth chapter and I think the ninth chapter. But anyway, that he tells that twice and it, for me, it's the most beautiful verse of Bhagavad Gita. Give your heart to me. Man, mana, bhav. So man, mana means your mind, but bhav means your heart. Give your heart, your mind to me. And do everything you do as an offering to me. And surely you will come to me. And this is my promise to you, Arjun, because you are priyoshime. It means you're dear to me. So you say, well, that's all right, that's Arjun. We know Arjun is Krishna Shaka, right? But, but in the context of Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna is our proxy. He represents us. So when Krishna says that, I promise you, if you give your heart to me, you'll come to me. He's speaking directly to all of us, not just to Arjun. And when he says, you're Priyoshime, you're dear to me, he means all of us. 
this is the wonderful thing, you know, the, the Guru Maharaj says, Krishna is the master of everything, the controller of everything, the source of everything that be. He's the supreme absolute truth. But, <laughs> but he's friendly to us. What is uh, um, also very beautiful is the story of Angarish Maharaj. Yeah. Where when Ambarish Maharaj goes to Lord Vishnu, Lord Narayan, and asks him to rescue him from the from Lord Narayan's You mean Durvasa. What's his answer? You mean Durvasa. Uh, Durvasa, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Durvasa. Yeah. Uh, his answer, you know, is that uh, he says, because uh, Durvasa says to him, he says, you, one of your main qualities is that of compassion. All right. And this will become nullified. If you don't offer <laughs> compassion to me, no one will ever believe this again about you. <laughs> so he says, yeah, that may very well be, but my heart is not mine to give. Yeah. It's, it resides in the, it, it, my, my, I reside in the hearts of the sadhus, of the, my devotees, etc. And I'm always in their hearts, in the core of their hearts. Yeah. So. You think, he, Vishnu says to Durvasa, you think, because you're a sannyasi, you're closer to me than yeah. than Ambarish, because he's a king, and you think that you're closer to me because you're a sannyasi, and you think because you're a brahmachari, you're closer to me than than uh, Ambarish because he's a grihasta. I think this is all false. All these thoughts are false, and you you need to go and beg his forgiveness, and and when Durvasa comes before. Ambarish, he says, Aho Ananta Dasanam. Today I have seen the glory of the devotees of the Ananta Dev. That I wanted to do some harm to you, but still here you are standing with palms folded, thinking that you're the culprit. What kind of. And you only want to do good for me, even if that means to be consumed by fire. I cannot understand. Today I have seen. The glories of the devotees of the Ananta Dev. It's very beautiful. It gives us great hope. So have no fear, Krishna says, have no fear. I promise you that if you give your heart to me, you'll come to me. And if you can't believe me, Arjun, who will you believe? Isn't it? So, you know, you have the assurance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself. If you give your heart to me, you can't, no one else can say that. Everyone else will say, yeah, give your heart to me, but I might mess it up later on, you know. I might make you regret that you did it later on. We are fallible, aren't we? With the best intention in the world, we're thinking... Like that, but Krishna can say confidently, "I'm never going to lead you down the dark alley and stab you in the back. I'm always up front and here for you, and I promise it to you that you can always rely on me. I'll never let you down. I'll never betray your confidence." This is Krishna, and and he is the supreme, but he's sympathetic to us. He's friendly to us. And that's our solace. Wonderful thing. So, we'll end our talk for today. And we will do Arti, do Kirtan, to that Supreme Personality of Godhead. Lord Sri Krishna, who has appeared as his own devotee, Sri Chaitanya Dev. And... Just to remind everyone, Tuesday is Gora Purnima, so we'll be holding a festival here all day. And then on Wednesday, Jagannath Mishra Anandotsav, when we celebrate the great festival of Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Devi in uh, the joy of their newborn son, Nimai. And that day we will make a big festival, big feast. And you're all invited.
Jam Vishnu Pad, Shila Bhakti Sunda Govinda Dev Goshami Maharaj Kija, Shila Bhakti Rakak Shrida Dev Goshami Maharaj Kija, Jai Bhagavan, Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarzati Thakur Kija, Rupa Nungu Guru Bhagya Kija, Sri Chaitanya Sarzata Acharya Brinda Kija, Samadei Tabaisnava Mandali Kija, Sri Harinama Shankirtan Kija, Nitai Gaura Premanandi.